ready. This We're good? Is, good? Okay. Okay. If you told me even a year, two years ago, I would say that I'd be making videos like this and it would be not a full-time job because I still film weddings and things right. like that, but in terms of like, your, your job is gonna be filming weddings, making YouTube videos. Yeah. I, I would not have believed you, like this is crazy. Hello everybody, we are here with the bearded legend himself, yes. the one, the only, Mr. Matt Johnson. Glad to be here. <laughs> Very excited. How's it going, man? Dude, it is so good. I yeah. have been completely overwhelmed. Yes. And I've met more people in the past day than I have like in the past year. Doesn't this feel like it feels like a filmmaker like Disneyland? It is. It definitely is that. Yes. Like by the end of the day, you're just you have wobble legs. Oh, and you can't, I, you know, can't talk anymore. I woke up and my neck hurt this morning, and yeah. I'm like, I didn't, like, my legs hurt a little bit, but my neck hurt. I'm like, right. why? I don't know. And it's kind of it's kind of compounded because you're in Vegas and you just lose all aspect of time. Yeah. I, or yeah, everything. People kept telling me, okay, come back to our booth at one for a raffle or two or three. And I'm like, I don't know what time what it is. What time is it? I don't know where I am in this building. So I'm not gonna be able to find you again. Yeah, plus it takes four hours to get from one side to another. So this is your first in A B. First in A B. Alright, so so this, I was anytime it's anyone's first in A B, that was us us like three years ago. What is What's the takeaway? What is your, what's your general feeling here? I need three months to hit everything. Okay. I, I have hit 5% of it, Fantastic. and I've loved it, but I'm just completely overwhelmed in terms of everything that I've seen. I feel like there's just 8K everywhere. Like, there's there a lot is more 8K, 8K yeah. like 8K. And I'm like, I just got 4K, yeah. okay? Like, I'm not, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Um, the other thing would be, like, I saw that Black Magic now has a battery grip for their pocket 4K camera, which, I know that that's like the thing that everybody's gonna be like the most excited about. Even this is right. like random dumb thing. It's like more than 45 minute battery life. This is unruled. Like, argh, <laughs> like just little junk like that is what excites me. Just yeah, weird stuff. So Fantastic. I'm super excited. Well, I heard last night. So there was a there was an amazing creator meetup, um, and uh, I, I was jealous when uh, some of our Soundstripe crew came back. They were at that event. They said it was phenomenal. Had a great time. It was time. the best event. Um, yeah. so it's good to see YouTube creators. I think coming to NAB. Yeah. And I wanted to ask, like, specifically on that, like, what what do you think is the benefit? Why why do YouTube creators? Why should YouTube creators come to NAB? Like, what are they getting out of that? I I was talking to another YouTube creator. I don't remember which one I was talking to yesterday. I, I, first of all, I'm surprised by how many YouTube creators are here. Yeah. I saw. Oh, I bet a few will come. No, it is so many people, in, specifically in the filmmaking space, that are here. Yeah. Which is super exciting for me to meet a lot of people that either I've watched for a long time or like idolize. I met Philip Bloom yesterday and I kind of like tried to not fangirl too hard. His girlfriend Sarah is like, I'll follow you on Instagram. I'm like, thank you, you're so nice, this is so great. Like, I don't know, it was super weird. But um, yeah, I feel like, I was talking to this other YouTube creator. He was saying how VidCon, which is like YouTube's big creator thing, it's basically like YouTube creators and like children that are there to see them. It's a, and it's like, a bizarre thing. And like their parents. So yeah. I've never been. Yeah. But I feel like NAB is almost like the adult VidCon where it's like everybody here is 25 and up, I would say almost. Like I haven't, I haven't seen a child running around at all. It's, it's also in Vegas that probably has something to do with it. Very, very true. Yeah. But it's, <laughs> it's definitely an older crowd. And so I'm, as someone that just had a baby a month and a half ago, I'm, I'm very glad my wife and our baby did not come to this because Dude. it would be complete sensory overload. I want to talk a little bit, um, a little bit more about YouTube specifically sure. because I know um, this is an amazing community. I think it's like it's grown, it's evolved, it's changed. There's so much that's been happening in the YouTube creator world, and for you, um, you know, you're. I think last time I checked, you're approaching 170,000 yeah. subscribers. It's, yeah. Your channel and the content that you're putting out is phenomenal. Um, you know what? I, I, what was your original goal when you started your YouTube channel? Like, what, what was the thing you're like, all right, maybe this could be something. What, what was that, sure. that goal? Well, I've actually been making YouTube videos since 2006. Okay, like, rock on. Way back in the day. But it was just really dumb videos. Until finally, I was talking to a friend of mine one day, and he was just getting into filmmaking. He said, listen, you're really good at explaining how to do things. <laughs> like, you're helping me a ton. You should just make videos explaining how to do things to other people. Yeah. And so, I made an A7S2 uh, review video, which was, end up being super popular. Mm. And that was kind of the, the launch of, oh, I can make things that help people. I do have a voice. And I have a unique perspective that I can apply to, mostly I would say, wedding filmmakers. But then I'm here and I'm meeting a lot of people that are like, 
oh, I don't even film weddings, and I love you. You're great. I just watch you all the time because you've helped me out with this thing, this thing. I'm like, oh, great. Okay, awesome. So you just happened to find this like this thing where you could provide value to people, and then it just kind of grew organically from there. Exactly. So you never really had like, hey, I'm going to try to get to this point or with YouTube or it, something. If you told me even a year, two years ago, I would say that I'd be making videos like this, and it would be not a full-time job because I still film weddings and things right. like that, but in terms of like... Your, your job is going to be filming weddings, making YouTube videos. Yeah. I, I would not have believed you. Like, this is crazy. That yeah. This is what what it is now. And uh, Kalen always puts, my friend Kalen over here, he always he always puts it as, uh, people ask him, like, what do you do? And he's like, I have a millennial job. It's just millennial things. I, uh, I film, <laughs> I, I travel and I film stuff for the internet. And people are like, what? And you're like, okay. Like, it's something a few years ago people would never do. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. So it's... Well, and you, you touched on something I think is really interesting because like creator burnout's a real thing. And so I've been following you for a long time and it seems like you kind of have this superhuman ability to just like be everywhere all the time doing things. And a lot of the YouTube uh, community, like I went to VidCon last year and there was yeah. a lot of conversation about creator burnout, staying motivated. And so the, the question is like, how do you combat that? Like what do you do okay. to stay motivated and like make sure you're grounded, you have time sure. for your family, your sure. kids? You're a busy man, sure. Johnson. Okay, this is, okay, two thoughts about this here. All First right. of all, um, my friend, my, okay, semi friend, acquaintance, Ryan Booth, had a great, uh, he was doing an Instagram Q&A, and someone was asking about, like, how are you balancing family and friends? Yeah. Like, family and your work. Fam family and filmmaking. You can cut that. How are we balancing family and filmmaking? And what he said is he doesn't think that those are two opposites of the same binary. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, these are not two, two things you're fighting against. Like, okay. Your family can be your inspiration, yeah. and you're making things because of your family. And so, if you think about it like that, it's not a this or this. It's right. a these can work in harmony together. So the other thing I would say is, and we're going a little more serious and deeper here, but I think that as a as a Christian, as yeah. somebody that loves Jesus, I don't think that I have to make things to please others. Mm. I yeah. already and making God very happy with what I do and who I am. Yeah. And so I'm not, burnout isn't as much of an issue because I'm finding joy in Jesus and I'm finding joy in who I have. And so whenever I am creating things, I'm not like, oh man, I gotta make people happy. I gotta get this many views. I gotta do this sort of stuff. Even though those thoughts still come up all the time, sure, of course, yeah. and you have to fight against them. But sure. at the same time, as long as I'm reminded, like I have a higher purpose and a higher calling and I, um, yeah my source of joy is not found in the X amount of views that I got this past week. Yeah. I already have that. Yep. So I'm not fighting for that, which is yeah. really good. Yeah. So, all right, we have lots of YouTube creators in the Soundstripe community. I'm breaking into YouTube. What is the, what's the advice you give to yourself maybe when yes. you first started? That like, you know. So as somebody that started YouTube in 2006, made a ton of dumb videos, always just the most random junk, never having a core focus or direction, the biggest thing that I found is the term is the riches are in the niches. Okay. So your focus, you should always have a focus for whatever video you're creating. And so I know my audience is wedding filmmakers. Yes. The main focus is tutorials for wedding filmmakers because if cool. you look here, you come here, how many YouTubers are there even here at NAB that are making tutorials for everybody, like all filmmakers? Right. A lot of people do that, and a lot of these YouTubers are big enough because they've been doing it for long enough that they've grown. But a lot of people go and they're like, hey, I'm just gonna make this tutorial for all filmmakers. And you're just throwing your voice into an ocean of 20,000 other people that are all doing the exact same thing. Like yeah. how many speed ramping tutorials have we seen? You know, right. people are like, you gotta speed ramp like Peter McKinnon, you gotta do this thing here, 120 frames per second. It's like, okay, that's great. But if I'm approaching things from, okay, how can I use this as a wedding or commercial filmmaker in a business sense to make money, that's kind of my niche. Yeah. And so I'm not just making, here's a generic review, it's, can you use this as a professional in this sense? Got it. So identifying the persona, understanding yes. them fully, knowing who they yes. are and what their pain points are, and then every single thing, you're con the, yes. the content you're creating kind of focused on yes. that as help, uh, providing value to them. And make sure you're passionate about it. Don't just pick something because you're like, I think this is what people want to watch. Because yeah. then that's what leads to burnout too. Yeah. Like, if I didn't love wedding filmmaking, yeah. if I didn't love making these specific YouTube videos and these specific creator things yeah. that, like, People ask me all the time, like, oh, I loved your Premiere export settings tutorial. And I'm like, I made that for me, okay? I yeah. forget the settings yeah. all the time myself. 
And so I've gone back and watched so many of my own videos. Like, wait a second, oh, there's the settings. Okay, great. Like, I'm just like I'm just a forgetful guy. These are just for me, and sure. other people happen to be like, oh, these are good too. Okay, yeah. great. I think that 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 helps you yeah. um, grow your channel, have your your channel like get momentum because there's an authenticity there mm -hmm. that wouldn't exist if you were trying to fabricate that yeah. that passion. You know, yeah. like um, so that's yeah, that's solid. All right, so I want to switch gears a little bit and think about um, the wedding film side of things sure. because we, Soundstripe loves the wedding film industry. It was definitely the one of the niches that kind of embraced what we were doing early on and uh, really helped carry us far into you know what we're doing now. Yeah. Um, and I, what's been so amazing about the wedding film um, community is that it, everybody's like super tight knit. Yeah. And I, I'm curious of your perspective of you know why. Um, why that, that community is kind of congealed into this really solid, tight-knit community. Like, what, yeah. what is it about the wedding film industry that's made that so interesting? I find that it takes, and this is true of all entrepreneurs, really, like, entrepreneurship takes a certain type of person. A wedding filmmaker takes a certain type of person. Interesting. Because you're not just, oh, I'm filming something and I have unlimited takes and let's do this again. Hey, could you say that again? It's literally, you have to be okay with these one-hit wonders where you're like, all right, we get one chance at this, there's gonna be one kiss, there's gonna be one moment, film it and record it properly, good right. luck. And so there's <laughs> almost this like trial by fire like experience, like I've seen some things, man. Like, and so everybody can kind of bond over that. And so there's a little bit of glutton for punishment. A, like. <laughs> a little bit, like it takes a very specific type of person. And yeah. I have people reach out to me all the time saying, hey, I'm, uh, some guy came up to me earlier and he's like, hey man, I watched your videos, I got into wedding filmmaking, I have 20 weddings booked this year. Like, you are literally the reason that I'm a freelancer. Wow. I'm like, holy crap, that's amazing. That's, that's awesome. so, so awesome. But then there's other people that tell me like, hey, I'm about to go buy $20,000 with the camera gear. I haven't even shot my first wedding yet. And I'm like, don't do that. Oh my God. Don't do that. Like, <laughs> never do that. Like, make sure that you are going to enjoy it first. Like, yeah. rinse some gear, go try it. Because the amount of people that I've talked to that go and film a wedding after buying a lot of gear and they're like, I hate this. What was I thinking? <laughs> That's okay, it's not for everybody. But um, another creator, I don't remember who it was right now. Oh, it was Levi Allen. He was saying how you need to be able, that's another guy, Levi Allen. Levi YouTuber. Allen. Fantastic. We'll link to all this. Also Canadian, yeah. everybody's Canadian. His stuff is so, so good. Anyways, he had a great, great talk about how you need to own whatever you create, like whatever you're a creator as, and you need to be proud of it. Mm. So it's like, Somebody be like, I'm a wedding filmmaker. No, like, you're like, I am a wedding filmmaker. I film weddings. It's great. Like, yeah. there used to be kind of this stigma, Uncle Bob with a camera at a wedding, kind of right. like, hey, what's up? And exactly. now it's like, oh, this is cool. This is cool. So the, the thing that I, you know, over the past couple of years, the format's kind of changed, obviously, for sure. wedding filmmaking. I mean, the now, I, I think probably for the past couple of years, the highlight video has been the, the thing. That's been the format that yeah. everybody's kind of, like, done. Yeah. Um, why do you think that is, and what do you think is, like, the next iteration of, of format for wedding oh, filmmaking? So, what's funny about culture now, especially, this all relates back to media culture, attention spans are getting shorter yeah. and shorter. Yep. And so, when I started my first weddings that I was shooting in 2010, 2011, 45 minutes long, an hour long, hour and a half long, like, you get all this stuff, here you go. Yeah. And then I realized, I don't really enjoy creating these things because I'm burning out just trying to create these really long videos. It's huge. And so, I realized I need to create what I want to create, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be shorter videos, yeah. but they're gonna be very high quality. And what you find is that a lot of younger people these days are like, I don't wanna watch longer than a five minute video. Right. I don't wanna watch longer than a 10 minute video. I have had brides and grooms that have said, hey, I know that they have a massive wedding budget. And they even tell me, they're like, yeah, like we could afford your biggest package if we wanted to. We could go all out, but I'm not gonna watch that. Right. I wanna watch the highlight, because I want a quick, concise view, and it's people's attention spans. Yeah. Because yeah. you open up Instagram, and it's one photo, swipe one photo, it's 15 yeah. second stories. Like, I, I want to do like as an April Fool's, like we're now offering Insta Story wedding films. Your film will be 15 seconds long. It's gotta be the best <laughs> moments. I don't feel like yeah. we're that far off from no, like that being no. a part of the thing. It's gonna be it. It's gonna be, yeah. it's gonna be awesome. But it's really weird. That is strange. Attention spans are getting shorter and shorter, and so yeah. that's why highlights are so popular. And wow. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Here's a, here's an interesting question. Um, I think, <laughs> what is a uh, what's the? You kind of already touched on this, but what would you say is the best and worst thing about shooting weddings? <laughs> oh man, um, I would say the best is. Weddings are, in general, a very, very happy time in people's lives. Like, it's this moment they've looked forward to their entire lives. Yeah. And so, 
it's a very happy, very safe job for the most part. Like, the closest to death I've come is nearly being trampled by, like, a horse-drawn carriage as the couple were leaving. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, it's a very safe career path in general. Like, yeah. it's pretty low-key. Everybody's usually really happy. A lot of joyful moments. And I love that I get to, like, be brought into that and experience that with people. And so that's really, really awesome. Um, on, like, the flip side of that, I would say there is that one-hit, one-take stress of, i got to get this right. Yeah. And so what a lot of filmmakers get uh, realize is it's... Anybody can learn a camera. Anybody can learn the settings. The technical side, that's easy to figure out. But there's some stuff that only comes through experience, yeah. which is what I, one of the things I enjoy teaching about on my YouTube channel. It's like, this is stuff that I've learned that you're only going to learn after you've been filming this for like five years, and you're going to be like, ah, it's crazy. And so like, if I can help people to cut some time off and like so they don't make some of the mistakes that I've made yeah it's gonna be good rock on so um, wedding filmmakers that you follow yes. that are creating am the most amazing wedding films yes. who are they what who can people check out to oh see like God. like yeah. just absolutely incredible wedding okay films. so I do uh, these wedding film review live streams once a okay. month now okay. on my YouTube channel where people submit wedding films and I review them yeah. and usually it's people this is my first my second wedding I've ever filmed please review this tell me what I can do but like once a month, like somebody else submit a wedding film and it just blows my mind. Like I'm just like, this is one of the best. I have no complaints. Like this is perfect. Um, this guy based out of, I think he's on, everybody's out of Canada, okay? I'm telling you, <laughs> this guy, Derek Chan, he is incredible. Like, and I, I'm following him on Instagram. I'm like, I love you. I talk about you all the time. And he's like, Thank, thanks, man. Okay. Like I'm like totally fangirled out. Love him though. He is just making these absolutely incredibly, just beautifully shot modern wedding films. Awesome. Um, my friend Kaylin Rome and his wife Christy of White and Reverie, they make some of my favorite wedding films. Awesome. Um, yeah, he's, he's blowing kisses at me right now. <laughs> just in terms of the, like, what they're good at is making you look cool. They look very cool themselves and they're like, we can give you some of our coolness. Do you want to be cool like us? And be like, yeah, I do. I want to be cool like you. And it, it works. Like, they're just cool. Yeah. Uh, the other guy, last guy, um, Josh Helton of A Little Long Distance. Okay. The emotion that he pulls out of people, I will cry like a baby when I watch his wedding films because he just gets these moments and he's, like, cutting it so perfectly. And I'm like, it's so beautiful. Oh, no. Like, and I'm just, yeah, me and my wife will just, I was at a conference and he was showing videos. And I'm, like, tearing up. Like, like it's fine. I just love it. And, like, the main mark of a good wedding filmmaker is if you can start a wedding film and you immediately know like oh that's that person's work really? like yeah. for them to be able to put their mark on it so heavily yeah. that you immediately know it's them yeah. and that comes through years of experience White and Reverie has that a little long distance Josh Helton has that I hope I have that I'm trying you know like okay this is what I do I hope this feels right yeah yeah I feel like with wedding films it's like you have an opportunity to really capture a beautiful moment and, and tell a, a really amazing story that pulls out that emotion it's a I think it's a very unique uh, and specific Thing. That's really, really cool. What's next for Matt Johnson? What, what, what's exciting you right now? What, what's, uh, what's on your horizon? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm getting asked to speak at more wedding filmmaking conferences and events and things like nice. that. So, uh, Kaylin and Christine again, White and Reverie, they started a uh, workshop called Venture Workshop, and it's for okay. wedding filmmakers. Um, it's going to be in Denver in May, May 6th through 9th. Nice. So I'm going to be speaking at that, and that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I get to go to Europe in November. I'm going to go to Morocco. So is that not Europe? That's Africa. I Whatever. Mean, it's yeah. close. It's right there. It's right around there. Um, I'm going to Morocco to speak at another conference in November cool. uh, called For Love's Sake, and that's going to be awesome. Otherwise, I have a baby now, so I'm like just so, here's this, I love you. i got to take care of you. You're still alive. Okay, great. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. Well, Dude, Matt, thanks so much for uh, for taking the time to uh, to chat with us. I know it's a crazy, insane <laughs> week, um, but certainly appreciate your time. Look, where can uh, where can people find you? Where can people see your work? Where can they watch your amazing tutorials and then just view that beard as much as they desire it's, to? Uh, literally, if you search "Who is Matt" on YouTube, all in word W H O I S M A T T. I will come up everywhere except for Twitter because some other guy took uh, the "Who is Matt" username, so don't follow him. Otherwise. That's that's pretty much me. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks again, Matt. Appreciate the time. Yeah. Adios. Have a, have a good show. You too. All right.